Fausto Buttress, which is the first one, first route that we come to in this guide bit. And uh, it's quite distinctive in the sense that it starts at the foot of the main gully, the first gully. Okay. So you've got Nornor's Gully that runs down here, and the North Buttress finishes on the north summit. And then this buttress is where Adam and Eve is, which is sort of the first Pinnacle Ridge area. Right. Um, we're going to the first one along. So it's going to be right next to the main gully, or the first gully, which is just there. <laughs> and then if I flip to number 11, and I, from this point I'll read sort of our first line of instruction because it will tell us what we're looking for. <laughs> so, description from 10 metres up Bowstow Gully, gain a niche on the right and follow a fissure past a chalk stone. So I know we're looking for the first gully, 10 metres up there gully, there's going to be a bit of a crack with a chalk stone in it. Yeah? Okay. I, and that now sort of dead easy, two, two little instructions that I'm having to remember, look for the first gully and it's going to have a crack in it with a chalk stone about 10 metres up it. That's quite an accurate description, broken down into two quite simple things to remember. So I can pop it away. I've got to refresh my rem memory. I know it's going to be up there on this roughly. Can't quite see from the angle, but I've got a big thing to look for. It's the first gully. Yeah. And then within that gully, I know what I'm looking for as well. So we'll just keep questing over. Feel free to shoot at me to. Right, so this is what the start of a grade 2 scramble is all about. Now, for Jackie, as you can see, wandering past like it's everyday life, which it probably is for him. Um, the very first part here, I found very difficult. And uh, Jack's going to help Lisa up now. Well done. Don't be graceful, just let your son have a last. That's the ticket. Well done. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and just wander over this way a touch. And that'll be you just there, if you're comfy enough just stood there. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Okay. Right, Sarah, are you ready? Uh -huh. Sorry. Oh god. I spent too many days out with Sarah, that's been my issue. Sorry, sorry Lisa. That's me being daft. See what I'm using there? I'm using the friction of the ground. My foot's pretty braced in against the edge. And if Lisa, do you want to just lean back for me on the rope? Just the rope. Yeah, like trust it as if you were sitting back on it. You can see that's doing the job yeah, yeah. there. So Lisa, you want to get your right left foot into the constriction about eight inches above where it is now? There, into there, yeah. So if you reach high up in the corner, there's a little hold. In the actual corner, that's the wall. That's what I've got. There we go. Higher up. There you go. Or if you if you want to learn to jam, there's a perfect hand jam there. That's it, well done. That's the loose ish one. That one? Yeah. yeah, but she'll hold. Go on, you got this. Beauty. Nice one, Lisa. Bring it to me. Awesome stuff. Can we bring you in? Away from the edge. 
Awesome. Well done, guys. What's this route called, Jack? Bowster Buttress. Bowster Buttress. Bowster Buttress. Grade two. It's the first. Goes at the first true buttress as you come along Heather Terrace. The gully to our side is Bowstow Gully. And then the next buttress along, going up that sort of obvious band of rock there, is Nornor's. Okay. So Nornor's gully on the far side. And then where you can see those guys in the yeah, red, yeah. that's North Buttress. Okay. Which puts you out on the north top of Truban. So that's the summit there then? Yeah, that's the north summit of Truban there. Yeah, okay. Right, as we go up this So whenever you body belay, depend, doesn't matter if you're using a cam or a nut or a thing around a tree, whatever side of you that you're attached to, so you can see here the rope goes from my coils underneath my left armpit and then back to our piece of gear. That is the side that you need your dead rope, uh, your live rope to your person or your client going down to. Okay, so that if you were to lean backwards, Steve, if you lean back now, see I'm not being untwisted. Yeah. Whereas we'll swap it because we're in actually relatively stable positions here. We'll swap it and I'll show you what happens if we go the other way. Mm -hmm. I can get it over the bloody rucksack. There's the way. Somehow he managed to catch it in there. There you go. So we now put it over this side. So same thing again, but this time if you lean back on it, go slowly because you're going to unwrap. Yeah, you're going to go that way. You can see I'm being unwrapped here. Yeah. As you lean backwards, this unravels might me as a body, which opens up our belay and it sort of fails it. Yeah. Uh, so it's totally key to have that live rope to your client under the same side that you're attached via. Okay. Thank you. Nice, look at that, not a knee in sight. Brilliant stuff. Gives a high five. Dream team. Boom, well done guys. There she is again. <laughs> Thank you very much for that Jack. You're very welcome. You want to plug yourself? Websites are out like that? Uh, I've got none yet, but <laughs> honestly, just thank you for coming out. I hope okay. you've enjoyed it. Really Your trip good. up Barstow Butchers. Yeah, it was really good. What an adventure. Two, two, four, yeah, man. Yeah. So from here, we'll stay on a rope until we're away from the edge. And then once we're back on the path, the rope can just come off. Happy and, days. You know, I know, right? And then we can, you can see if you poke your head just around here, and you, there's a path just there, which is what we're going to take down to where the sun is. Oh. And then we'll probably end up dropping down that side yeah. and we'll just boot back along the road. It's a bit more pleasant the descent you That'll have, do. you say in your yeah. Yeah. Gentler on the knees. Oh, on the knees, yeah. Lisa, can I get you to just hit the camera? Please. Cool. So, scenario, I'm an ML leader and out. We've got our imaginary edge here and we need to go down it. There's no possible way around. We've made, made an error with our, our, uh, our nav and we now need to get down this and it's one step. Might have somebody who's a bit bit tired, got a sore ankle or whatever, so I want to safeguard him with a rope. This is our cliff, so I'm now looking straight up the hillside, not over to the left or to the right, and straight away this boulder here is looking pretty unquestionable. So I'm going to take a walk round it and just see where the lift is on it and make sure it's, the rope's not going to lift up and over. You can see it's undercut down here, got a nice lift on it this side and it's undercut here. So I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to give it a token kick, but let's be honest, that's about two tons of rock. It's not going to lift. Cool. So I now need to start thinking about how I'm going to tie the rope to this. The most straightforward way of doing that, pay out what you think one loop round's going to be, tie an overhand knot. Everything for your ML can be done with an overhand knot or a figure of eight. Tie my overhand knot. I'm going to walk the other end, just back around the boulder, taking care to make sure it's nice and low down in there. Back to our 
my start point. Where's that? Shift it back down. So all I'm doing there is just rolling the knot so that it's at this end. And then going to be sat where I'm going to be sat, and I'm going to pull either side and just work it to make sure it doesn't lift up. And it also gives the rope a chance for it to seat down if there's any turf that it's against. I'm just going to re-thread that overhand knot. So I start going in the same way. Come round the back. And down. And that is the rope safely and securely attached to that boulder. Bearing in mind that I'm leaving a good tail. Sort of 30 centimetres or more is what you want. If it was just there at the end of the rope, I'd adjust it. Cool. I then gonna think I'm gonna be sat here where I can get my feet really braced in against some of these boulders. Alright? So I'm gonna put the rope, take it, pass it round me. Got the rope passed round. Tie a figure of eight. No, we didn't use the figure of eight. Were you doing something else? Yes. You can either do that or if you're in question of it, you can just tie another overhand knot. Cool, there's my loop. I'll step into that. Was that some similar to what you were shown? That's more like it, yeah. Cool, we'll do what you were shown then, because that's what you've seen and what's going to stick in your head potentially more. So I just adjust that. So it's nice and tight around me. Brilliant stuff. Right. And I'm going to back flake my rope, keeping everything neat. Sarah, can I get you over here? Oh, Lisa. Uh, Lisa, can I get you over here? An ongoing sketch for today. Oh, I know. It's been awful. What method were you shown to tie your client We'd on? probably do an overhand knot, something similar to that, and then um, you'd, the, it'd be a, a loop, which would go around, then you'd re-thread the other end through it, but you'd put a stopper knot so it didn't then strangle the client. Yeah. So, we'll do that then. That, yep, yeah, that's the kind of thing. Tie an overhand knot. I then tie a stopper knot here. If you zoom in on this, this is quite crucial. Being sure to wrap the rope back down when you do your two twists there. Because you see, as I wrap downwards, I'm actually wrapped around these two strands of rope here. Yep. Where if I wrap upwards, do you see how I'm just wrapping around one, one strand right there? So it actually generates a different knot. <laughs> one being a secure, safe thing to use and one being a death-defying thing to use. So let's do that. And I might actually just feed a bit more in so that we've got a good chunk of tail. So if you always think like 30 centimetres or more as your sort of tail, you've then got a sliding loop and you're just going to move that overhand knot to adjust for different waist sizes of person. So if I get you to step into there, and lift that up so it's around your waist. We'll adjust that round. We can actually make Ooh, that a not bit, bad, not bad guess there. Slightly smaller for yourself. And that overhand knot stops it tightening too much. It won't strangle the person. It won't strangle your client, lovely. Right, Lisa, if you just take one step backwards, give me space to sit down. I'm tied in, this goes directly behind me here, okay, so it doesn't matter if my dead rope's on this side or on that side. You'd just be wishing more comfortable exactly. for you. If this was tied into my harness, then it does matter if yeah. it's coming across one side, but it being directly behind, we're safe as ours is. As it so happens, I've coiled all the dead rope well, this yep. over there, so that's going to be the side that I take my half twist in. Brace myself into position. So that it's tight behind me here. 
there's no slack between our belay through to our, sorry, our anchor through to our belayer through to our climber. And I'm nice and securely braced. Find something nice and solid to pop my feet on. And if you just start walking backwards, and then if I want to lock, my arm just comes across. You just lean back. Lean back, give it like, as far as you can. And I honestly, I'm doing this with one hand quite comfortably here. Hypothetically, if you had to go down more than one big step, would you probably put your rucksack on to save yep. and um, again, burning your back? I've, I've only got, not got my rucksack on now because we've just topped out of a scramble. Yeah. In reality, you're going to have your rucksack on. Um, I'd potentially wear uh, a protective layer as well. Not one of your posh ones though, because it'll get burnt. Fancy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'd put an extra layer on, especially if it was like a sunny day and I was in a t-shirt. Yeah. You're a summer ML, it's quite possible you'd be in a t-shirt and shorts. I'd put a layer on just to protect my myself a little bit more. Yeah. Because as soon as there's weight in this and it's tight and it's moving, yeah. you're generating a lot of friction behind your back. You could potentially like get a bit of rope burn or whatever. Yeah. But anyway, and then if you was coming towards me, you're now doing an up climb. It's the same process, but if you take one step, take both strands, slide down. Take one step, take both strands, slide down so on and so forth. So at no point is that rope not being held. Mid-step, whatever it is, if you start to go, yeah. Jack's got every chance of keeping all that rock in a, keeping all that rope in a firm way and keeping you safe. Brilliant. Thank you for the demonstration. That's okay. Right, so this stuff down here is club moss. You can see that very distinctive shape. And I think and I could be wrong here because it's not, it's very, very young. It's not quite started splitting off yet. I think it's stag's horn club moss. Uh, stag's horn is identifiable because as it grows, it splits off similar like a cactus was with those arms coming off of it, looking like a stag's antler. Uh, and it's also got a little bit of fur like, or fluff on the tip. And if you look at that, there is a little bit of fluff starting to grow in there, um, but it is very, very young, but it, Similar to star moss, which is just inside of where you're sat, just in here. It's from the same sort of family, um, and going back sort of to Jurassic and Cretaceous period, the both of these would have grown to a similar size, sort of around 20 to 30 meters. Uh, they're full grown, um, and they're, they're very simple celled organisms. They don't produce a flower, so they don't pollinate in that that sense. Um, they grow along with like creepers and then go down to the ground again and come back up rather than sort of pollinate like a flower would. So they're very simple. They grow in an upland environment for the most part where obviously nut nutrition uh, is a bit more scarce and the environment's a bit harsher. So that them being very simple helps them sort of, it's an adapt adaptation for them to survive up here a bit better. But yeah, you can tell you're getting into more upland environment when you start seeing more things like that, that and like hard fern that we pointed out earlier, and um, parsley fern as well, very simple celled. Cool.